All right, today is August 31st, 2011. Uh, out on a repossession, it's a double header for a uh, black, or actually gray, dark gray Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee and a white 97 Ford Expedition, older body style Expedition. Just going up here into the Ritchie neighborhood of Highland, it's a North Alpine area. And uh, gonna see what we got here at this address. Be there in just a second, see what's going on. They told us that the uh, 97 Expedition is supposed to be up for sale or being sold. And they want us to try to pick it up immediately before they give possession of it to the other party. We don't know who the other party is or where they live. And so that's one of the things we're going to want to try to figure out if they have already given up the vehicle. And then uh, most likely the, vehicle, the Jeep's going to be driven by him or by his wife. It's an older couple. It's in a nicer neighborhood. So not expecting any kind of conflict. We'll see how this goes. All right. We're just coming up on the address right now by the house. And I noticed the garage door is going up. And she was just pulled into the driveway, so we're going to get our arm ready here, get our camera ready on our laptop. She just pulled up into the garage, so we're going to go walk up there and see how this is going to go down. Right, let's go check this out. Are you his wife? Yeah. How are you doing? Fine. He's asked us to come out and pick up a couple of vehicles, a white expedition I guess you guys have for sale. Yeah. A 97. Yeah. And then they also want us to pick up this Jeep as well. Uh-oh, we better pay them. <laughs> yeah, do you guys have a number to get a hold of them? Yeah. Okay, can you give them a call right now because we've got to have them give us orders to not pick it up before we can leave. Yeah, we definitely So yeah, give them a call real quick and see if you can get them to get okay. that taken care of. Yes, and the dealer is supposed to be paying me in the next day or so for the, uh, and we Expedition? Yeah. Okay, so you guys have already given it to the other party. You're just waiting on them to pay pay you now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you tell them the name of who you sold it to and stuff? I'm sure my husband did. Let me okay. Me yeah, I want you to grab him and see if he can maybe we can get this cleared up. Is he coming? Hey, how you doing? Good, are you? Just to come out and pick up two vehicles from you guys. Your wife explained that one was the white expedition that you guys, I guess, have sold to somebody else. Yeah. Well, we haven't, we hope it's going to be sold in the next day or two. Well, he's going to give us the money. It's been sold. Right. If he gives you the money, then it's sold. Okay. But the other party's already taken possession of that vehicle? Yes. Okay. So I understand that it's not here right now. No, it's not here now, no. Okay. <laughs> other one and I can make a payment on this one. Okay well you'll need to like I said you guys need to take care of that with it. They want us to pick it up until that's been handled and so uh, you guys are welcome to make the payment if you guys if we, we have to take it regardless whether you have intentions of paying the make payment tomorrow or not is what I'm saying because that's their instructions with us is we'll pick it up we'll take okay. it to their yard there and then if you guys are able to get in and make your payment like you said then they Do give the vehicle to back to you. To pick the car up? You don't pay us anything. We are contracted by them just to pick the vehicle up and take it to their facility where they decide to charge you a fee for that, you can discuss that with them. That's your bank and that's something for you guys to discuss with them, but we don't charge you a fee. There's no separate fee from us or anything. It's something we contract with them and I have heard where there's been situations similar to this where the well, bank they says give us a warning, They usually don't. No. When we're doing this kind of stuff because we have people on obviously you guys aren't the type of folks that would no. run and hide your vehicle no. but no. Their policy is not to call people and warn them that we're coming out to pick up the vehicle. But you guys are welcome to grab some stuff out if you need right now, like some yeah. cell phone chargers and stuff. Well, how do you just use this one then? Yeah. 
and then just go down to the branch on Strath State Street in Orm tomorrow. And where is that then? In Orm, State Street. There's a gas and State Street. There's a there's a gas station around right the corner. Okay. Right on the corner there. It's huge. It's a, probably their biggest branch they have, and the vehicle will be there. At they have a little, uh, they have a bullpen behind well, how there. Do you, if they if they have to take it, why don't you just take out what you need? Yeah, everything else will be everything else will stay locked in the vehicle and secure overnight. So only grab the stuff you absolutely have to have right now. Okay. All right. And then we'll tell. Do you know the name by chance of the other party that uh, purchased that? It's their name is right here. If you want to come look, they they are the neighbor. Right here. Okay. Right okay. Okay, good. I, and hopefully that's the way that goes, and then you, they can get the... What do you want us to do? Do you want me to just, back it out for you? I can pull it out if you want to give me a key. If you guys want, just, do you have a number to call them? I can give you a number to call them, but it's just their, their main office number, and you just call them tomorrow, and they'll have a report from us and know that we'd come out and pick this up tonight. Okay, and then, so you want us to call you tomorrow then? Call them. Oh, okay. And they'll make all the arrangements for you to get this vehicle back and to get everything else squared up. Okay, all right, we'll do. Okay. okay. You know, did, she, did she leave the key in it, or did she have to go get that? Uh, you know, one second. Let me see if, uh, hey, honey, I can give them my key. Really yeah, and they'll have that same key there at the at the branch with the vehicle. So either one of them will work. How do you guys like this new Durango? Oh, it's okay, yeah. Yeah, really? I had one of the older body styles, and they didn't do too good on gas mileage. So oh, they're just not very good. Not good either? either? Yeah. No. They sure look like they can hold a lot of people, though. All right, we'll back this out and get out of your hair. Uh -huh. Oops. Yeah, I could tell just by the type of neighborhood and the age of the guy on the paperwork that this wasn't the kind of account to back up the driveway and block the garage and have a big old fiasco with my truck up in the driveway. These people were going to either be sensible or very stern and... If they're going to be very stern, you don't want it to be with your truck up in the driveway and a big old fiasco if it's avoidable. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull down the street here just a little ways and turn this thing such that it's aiming the way that we're going to be going out of the neighborhood. And then we'll walk back and get our truck. We'll do this just around the corner from their house. That way none of their immediate neighbors have to see what we're doing and they won't have to be watching what we're doing as well it just keeps people from getting weird on you when they will sit there out their window watching you load a vehicle some people are just they don't like having that happen right in front of their house but yeah i didn't get a chance to do a lot of uh video fancy video on this one because i was literally i driven by the address didn't see either one of the two vehicles it was a double header for the white expedition and the uh um, gray Jeep and so we got him standing out front so I'm going to put my camera back on my side so it doesn't look like I'm filming around the course I wasn't doing this right in front of your immediate neighbors and they weren't questioning what was going on. Um, yeah. Well I just wanted to just have some like some safety things in the back that are like you know we put out of Okay. loading the vehicle up right in front of their house because then they get neighbors that are like what was going on steve oh wow so we just we always try to people are polite with us we pull around the so, corner so tell me what you want us to do tomorrow then i'm sorry just contact okay and I'll, I'll tell them that do you have a card or something sure. that, yeah let me give you a card. card i'll say that you guys came around and uh sure there is my card for my business right okay and that's my name on there my number 
Good. Well, I'll oh, she just wants some things out of the back here, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, I'll back up to it. I'll give you some space to open that door up. You know what? I just take here a few. I don't have any shoes. Can you just run me back down to... You bet. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and grab what you need. I'll run you over there. I'll just take a minute. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and grab... Do you see the car's open? Is it open? Yeah, it's still unlocked. Yeah. Give me as a backseat if you want. Open that back door and just set that stuff in there. I thought those guys were kidding the ass. No, are you kidding? I had much worse. You guys are fine. I had, I had a guy actually just not too many streets over from Well, I've seen a TV program on, you know, this guys. Repo. Yeah, that stuff's horrible. I don't, I don't even know why they call that stuff repossession, because it's not. <laughs> but those people go crazy on those shows and do a lot of psychotic things. Yeah, I mean, they should be arrested for... They should. You can't grab people and yank them out of their vehicles and pepper spray them. And... Oh, I don't mean that. I mean the people that are giving them a hard time. Oh, yeah. they yes. Vice versa, yeah. I hear I you. guess anybody. Yes, Bo but... Both sides. It should never get that violent, that you should. know? No. It's ridiculous for people to act like that over personal possessions and vice versa. But, yeah. All right, well, I will call them uh, if they're close now. I'll call them tomorrow yeah. morning. Yeah, call them first thing, and then they will be able to make the arrangements. So they'll more likely want you to come down there to that branch. And... Yeah, they're at uh, Lavella Edwards yep. Stadium. Yep. All right, well, th thank you. Thank you, Steve. Right, can I can I grab that? Those... Yep. Go ahead and grab okay. your stuff, you bet. Okay. Yeah, looks good. You dropped a couple things there. <laughs> All right. Take your time, though. All right. Yeah, we always you always look at the date of birth and the whole picture, type of neighborhood I'm in, all of it fit. The MO that I wouldn't be uh, dealing with very aggressive people, as you can see. Come in, you know, keep your guns covered. There's no reason to come in flaunt power if you don't need to. If you're in a gang-infested drug neighborhood. You gotta go in, bandana, freaking gold necklaces around your neck. Just kidding. Get this Jeep hooked up. They even showed us the house where the expedition is staying at. We'll talk to the finance company tomorrow and to see if they want to still have us go after it or not after getting the Jeep. If they say, heck yeah, even though they know that it's been given to another party. And we got a job to do. We'll do it. I saw her pulling the garage go up. I just pulled around the corner. I did my first drive by. The garage was closed. I was just pulled around the corner, which is our standard procedure. Sitting on the address. Worked out like clockwork. She pulled up. This is the time of the day when people were coming and going. So you just sit up the street, put your notes in where you've got visibility on the house. And as soon as I saw the garage door going up, I saw the uh, blue Durango in there, which was not one of our two vehicles. And then I saw the gray Jeep pull up. And I wasn't even recording or anything. I didn't really have any time to react other than just to pull up and go to work. So by the time I was 
filming. We were already walking up and making contact with her. Baby strapped down. Get some lights put on it. in the garage. They're either going to come out hostile or they're going to come out friendly. you got to gauge what you're going to do based on that. I was able to stick a window washer thing which I saw in their garage to block one of the sensors so that if it went hostile, I had the advantage of that helping me so I had to run down the driveway real quick and grab the truck. They try to close the garage flashing on them and take a minute to figure out what happened and that minute would be my minute to get up in there with the truck. It's like she might have forgot her cell phone too so we're gonna run that back over. First thing we gotta do is put this thing into four-wheel neutral. The way you do that on Jeeps is you turn them on Start it up, you put the primary in neutral, and then you put the uh, transfer case into neutral, park, and then turn it off, and now the vehicle will roll. All four tires are in neutral. Sure that it rolls. It does. So we know we don't need to worry about putting the go jet or the dollies on it. Now we'll go throw our lights on. that pulls in a garage in a situation like this. Ten different neighborhoods, ten different people, would have been ten different scenarios. That was one of many ways to handle a situation like that. Thinking plan A, plan B the whole time. Just execute. A lot of stuff going through our heads. It is uh, later in the evening. We're heading back up here into Highland for this uh, expedition, the second half of this double header. Just coming up on the address here. We're heading up the Alpine Highway. I just wanted to show this. Uh, I just got that white uh, Nissan Altima. Did the video on it and uploaded it. We looked for it, looked for it forever, and I had the license plate memorized in my head. And you see a lot of weird coincidences that'll happen with license plates. 
And as I'm driving up the Alpine Highway, even though I've already gotten that Altima, I've got a uh, cross country in front of me. I don't know if I'm able to get it on video or not, but the license plate on the vehicle is Alpha 147 Mike Sam. And the license plate that was on our Altima that I looked for forever was Alpha 147 RW. So I'm still seeing Alpha 147s because I had that memorized in my head. It's just a weird coincidence. You'll see stuff like that. Matter of fact, one of the first nights I was out looking for that Altima, I was in an underground parking garage looking for it, and I found two white Nissan Altimas about six car apart from each other that had almost identical license plates. It's one of those really weird things. I'll actually cut that in right here and let you guys check that video segment out. I kept it, and I didn't know why I kept it. Out doing some late night repossessions in an underground parking garage where my truck won't fit, so I'm walking through it on foot looking for a white Nissan Altima that we had information might be parked in one of these uh, apartment complexes. I just want to document another one of these weird license plate things. I've got a white Nissan Altima license plate Bravo 240 Delta Papa, and then just a couple parking spots down from that vehicle. Same parking garage, not my vehicle. Also a white Nissan Altima, Bravo 240 KK. Two white Nissan Altimas in this underground parking garage, both with a license plate starting with Bravo 240. Very weird. I mean, you can't even imagine the odds of that. And that's the third time today that I've had a almost near hit on a license plate. And here I've got two white Nissan Altimas just a couple parking spots from each other, both starting with Bravo 240. Weird. I, I, I've got weird video clips like that that I keep of strange things that I see over time while doing this job. And, uh, and once in a while I find a, a reason to cut them in and just show people strange things that we come across in the middle of the night, uh, sometimes in the middle of the day. So here I am cruising up here and I got a car that I'm following all the way up into this neighborhood that's got an almost identical license plate to the Altima I got just yesterday on a random skip, just driving down the freeway and boom, there was my plate, right car, right time, executed the repo and I still can't clear the mechanism. There's an Alpha 147 right in front of me. Pretty funny stuff. Anyhow, we'll uh, be right up on this address here for this expedition really quick. Earlier today when we were out running the uh, address and we got the Jeep picked up, the guy was kind enough to uh, show us that it was one of his neighbors in the same cul-de-sac as him that had bought the, uh, or was in the process of buying the expedition off of him. He hasn't bought it yet, and he hasn't paid the money yet. And we've uh, talked with the finance officer and told him the situation, and he said, yeah, absolutely get the other vehicle as quick as you can uh, because there's, you know, other fees owed and things that are tied to this loan, and it's not just the sale of that expedition. So even if there's a certain party that is interested in buying it, does come up with the money in two days. That's not the only thing that the uh, finance company is interested in here. So we're uh, just coming up on the address right now, pulling into the neighborhood, and we'll see if this expedition sit at the neighbor's house like we expect it is. All right, we're just pulling into the cul-de-sac here. Try to get our headlights to be our light. I'm gonna shine it on this expedition. Here, they do have a number of vehicles out in front of their house. This is the neighbor that he claims he sold the vehicle to. So, there's a possibility that the vehicle had some mechanical issues and you know, they take it into a mechanic or something. So, what we'll have to do is watch this uh, address for a couple more days, and then we've got a weekend coming up. There's a good possibility, too, that he may have warned them of the possibility that we might be coming to repossess it because we were out here picking up the Jeep. He may have been talking with the neighbor and they were, took the precautions to uh, go ahead and hide it somewhere else for the evening. We know it's not in the garage because earlier today that garage is open and it's packed full of stuff. So we will, uh, it's funny, we just passed a plate that said 471. 
instead of 147 backwards. <laughs> Anyways, yep, still got the uh, 147 stuck in the head. Takes a little while sometimes to clear that stuff out when you look and look and look for a plate for weeks and then months at a time and you just you're looking, looking, looking and you're just expecting to see that. That's why there's no surprise when I saw it on the freeway. Just told me there's my car. The plate matched the description of what I had stored in the head. There's the church right up the street here where we'll check it, make sure that they aren't uh, parked in the church parking lot. It's a common thing that we see a lot up here. And we'll uh, wrap this one up for the night. Work on it again another day.